To install Event Espresso, head to Plugins, then Add New, and type Event Espresso. Install and activate the plugin. Before we configure the plugin, you'll want to enable permalinks under Settings, then Permalinks. If you haven't already, pick one of these options and then click Save Changes. You'll also want to make sure the time zone of your site is correct by going to Settings, General, choosing your time zone here, then click Save Changes. There are a lot of settings you can take a look at later as needed. For now, let's confirm a couple important settings. First, under Event Espresso, then General Settings, enter your organizational details under Contact Information. Further down, optionally add a logo, then click Save up here. Next, click on the Critical Pages tab and verify that there are no errors. Then, at the top, click on the Countries tab. If you're in North America, the default settings should be fine. But if you're in another country, you'll likely want to remove United States by clicking No, then Save Changes. You can also repeat for Canada, which is enabled by default. Again, clicking No, then Save Country Details to remove it from the list. Then, find your country, click Yes to show it, then click Save Country Details. Lastly, we can add a page to show your events by going to Pages, Add New, enter the title, All Events, then in the description type Espresso underscore Events with square brackets on either side. This will be replaced with the listing of your events once we add them. Click Publish to save the page. We'll add a link to this page so your visitors can access it from your site's menu shortly. That's it. Now you're all set to add your first event. Now that we have Event Espresso installed with the basic configuration, let's add our first event to the site. Go to Event Espresso, then under Events, go to Add New. Start by adding the title or short description of your event at the top here, just like you would a blog post. Next, add in a longer description for your event below. You don't need to add things like the event location name, address, or the date and time of your event, as we'll add that in below. You can use formatting tools like headings, bold and italic text as needed to describe the details of your event. Scroll down and add the date your event starts and ends here. We'll go through adding RSVPs and tickets for your site in a later video. For now, if you'd like to hide the ticket selection and only promote the event details on your site, you can go over here to Display Ticket Selector and select No from the dropdown. You can optionally add a venue for your event here, with as many details as you'd like. We'll go through adding a venue and showing a map for it in a couple videos, as you need a Google Maps API key. Here, in the excerpt section, you can optionally add a shorter description of your event, which social media sites and Google Search will use when describing your event. If you leave it blank, the first couple sentences of your long description up here will be used instead. Underneath that, down here, I would uncheck Allow Comments if your site doesn't already have them disabled. Rather than have public comments be added, I find it's best for people to contact you or the organizers directly with any questions, then you update the event details if needed. Lastly, you can add any categories or tags to group and organize your events here, just like a blog post. You can also add a featured image, which would appear when the event is shared on social media, and it might appear on the event details page, depending on your theme. Now, just click Publish at the top. You can click here to see the event as it appears to visitors on the site. You can see all the event details are listed below. When logged in as an administrator, you can go to Event Espresso, and under Events, 
click Edit Event to modify any of the event details, and quickly add another event by clicking Add New. So now you should know how to add events to your site and can continue to add more as needed. If you manually type slash event at the end of your website URL, you'll see a listing of events. If you added the other page called all events with the shortcode in it, you can also go to all dash events to see that listing. But that's not very useful to someone visiting your homepage that doesn't know this page exists. Let's add an item in your menu so visitors can easily find events on your site. First, in the back end of your site, Go to Appearance and then Menus. If you don't already have a menu, you can create one by clicking Create a new menu. Give it a name, like Primary. Then click Create Menu. Next, under Custom Links, type forward slash events. And type events in the link text box. Then click Add to Menu. If you want to use the All Events page we created instead, go to Pages, Click All Events, then click Add to Menu. You can remove the other item by clicking the drop down here, then clicking Remove. Pick where you want the menu to appear under Menu Settings. These will be different depending on your theme, but in this case, I want it to appear in the top or header menu. So I'll check that, then click Save Menu. If we go back to the site, now the page listing all of your events is in the top menu where visitors can click on it easily. You need to get a key to display a map of your event locations using Google Maps on your site. To get started, go to Event Espresso, then Venues, and click on the Google Maps tab. Click this link to get started creating a Google Maps API key. You'll need to either sign in to your existing Google or Gmail account, or create an account using this link. After signing in, you can click yes or no to get updates and feature announcements from Google. And you'll also need to agree to their terms of service. Then click agree and continue. Note that as of June 2018, you may need to add a credit card as part of this process. Otherwise, if you exceed the free limits, your maps may stop working. Enter a name for your API key, such as the title of your site. And under Application Restrictions, we'll also want to restrict who can use this key, so others can't use it on a different site. Click HTTP Refers or Websites, then we'll fill in the box here. If the domain for your website has www or something before it, such as www.yourdomain.com, enter star dot your domain dot com forward slash star, which allows it to be used on any page. If you always redirect to just your domain dot com without www or anything before it, just enter your domain dot com forward slash star. For my site, since it's my events dot wp engine dot com, I'll enter my events dot wp engine dot com forward slash star. Then click create. Copy your API key and paste it here. Then click Save. Lastly, let's create a venue in Event Espresso and add it to your event. Under Event Espresso, click Venues. Then click Add New Venue. Enter your venue name and scroll down to the Physical Location Address area and enter the address. Then under Google Map, click Yes from the dropdown. You can fill other details if you'd like, such as the venue website and phone number, or click Publish to save it as is. Then, under Event Espresso, Events, click Edit under your event. Scroll down, and you can now select the venue from the list. Then, up here, click Update. That's it. If we view the event, Maps should now be reliably showing when visitors are viewing your event details. To accept RSVP or registration for one of your events, 
Go to Events under Event Espresso. Choose one of your events and select Edit. Scroll down to the Date and Time area, and under Ticket Options, you can specify how many registrations you want to accept for your event. You can also set the dates when the registration can be accepted here. If you have different types of RSVPs, like a special seniors ticket, which provides wheelchair accessible seats, you can click Create New Ticket and enter those details. Here, under Event Registration Options, make sure Display Ticket Selector is set to Yes. Now, click Update at the top. Now, when visitors view your event, they'll see an area to RSVP and can select how many spaces they need, confirm RSVP, and enter their name and email address. To see who has RSVP'd for your event in the admin area of your site, go back to Event Espresso, then Events, and click Registrations underneath that event. Here you can see who has registered for your event and even export the list of attendees using this button. That's it. You're all set to accept RSVPs for your events right on your own site. To accept payments using the free version of Event Espresso, you'll need to set up a PayPal business account. So if you don't already have one, head to paypal.com and sign up. Once you've signed up and confirmed your account, log in, then click the profile menu here, then click Profile and Settings. Go to My Selling Tools, then click Update beside API Access. Scroll down and click on the option for NVP SOAP API Integration Classic by clicking this link here. Ensure Request API Signature is selected, then click Agree and Submit. You'll click Show here, here, and here to get your API username, password, and signature in just a sec. But in a separate tab, go back to your site, and under Event Espresso, click Payment Methods. Click PayPal Express, then click the Activate button. Scroll down and copy and paste the API username, password, and signature from this screen here. Then at the bottom, click Update. You can remove the Invoice option by clicking Invoice, then at the bottom, click Deactivate Invoice Payments. Finally, create a ticket for sale by either creating a new event or editing one of your events under here. I'll click Edit. Then under the Ticket Options area, you can enter the details of your tickets, such as how many are for sale and the cost. Then up here, Click Update. Visitors will now see an area to buy a ticket when viewing an event. And after entering their details, they'll see an option to pay for their ticket using a PayPal account or a credit card. You can see who's registered the same as RSVPs by going to Event Espresso, then Events and clicking Registrations underneath the event, or clicking Registrations under the main menu to view all registrations. If you'd like additional options, such as other payment gateways, instead of just PayPal, or the ability to check people in when they arrive, you can upgrade to the full version of Event Espresso over on eventespresso.com. Congrats, you're all set to sell tickets from your site. So you have your normal events page, but sometimes you only want to show a listing of certain events somewhere else on your site, maybe at the end of an about page, or within one of your blog posts. Fortunately, with a short code included in Event Espresso, you can easily market and promote your events anywhere on your site. As an example, let's say you have an about page on your site, and you want to show the next three upcoming events at the end. Just edit the page. And in the content of the About page, type Espresso Events with an underscore in between, 
and then square brackets on either side. This would be replaced with the title, date, and link to your event, which you can see by updating the page, viewing it, and you'll see the events listed here. If you want to only show up to three events, and only events in the workshop category, you can edit the page, and in the short code here, type space, limit equals three with quotes around it. And to limit to only events with the workshop category slug, type category slug equals workshop. Now click update. And when you view the page, scroll down and you only see three events and only those in the workshop category. You can repeat this process anywhere in your site, even in the middle of a blog post. And that's so you can promote and list your upcoming events anywhere on your site. One great way to promote the events on your site is with a newsletter. But manually copying and pasting the event details is time consuming. It's also prone to errors, which could cause people to go to your events at the wrong date and time. Fortunately, you can easily generate a newsletter of your events using a plugin I created, Event Calendar Newsletter. You can get a copy over at eventcalendarnewsletter.com. Once the plugin is installed and activated, go to Event Calendar Newsletter in the main menu. Here you can pick how far in the future to get events or enter a custom date range. Optionally filter by one or more categories or tags. Enter some content above or below your event listing and group events if you have lots of them by day or month. You can select one of the existing designs or click custom to create your own using only the details you need. Once you're ready, click Generate Events. Now, you can copy and paste these details into your email newsletter using a program like MailChimp, Aweber, or ActiveCampaign, and save these options as a template so you can quickly create it again. You can even automate sending a newsletter every week or month by going to Save Templates, and using this feed URL as an RSS campaign in most email services. Full details are available at eventcalendarnewsletter.com under Get Help and the documentation, or contact support and get help directly. And that's so you can save time and generate your email newsletters with no mistakes with Event Calendar Newsletter. Grab the plugin for 20% off as a WP101 user by going to eventcalendarnewsletter.com forward slash WP101. And that's how you can save time and generate your email newsletters with no mistakes using Event Calendar Newsletter.